Welcome to this midweek moment. Today is March 17th, and I wanted to share with you a scripture that comes to us from Luke 15. I think it's a, probably a very familiar passage to you. Luke 15 is the story of the son. Well, two sons and a dad. It begins in chapter 15. Verse 11, there was a man who had two sons, said Jesus. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. The word of the Lord. I wanted to share with you a part of a reading from the book Lent in Plain Sight that we've been using, and it's um, on page 98. It says this, the familiar story of the prodigal son tells of a young man returning home, expecting to be shamed or relegated to secondary status, but who instead receives an unmitigated welcome, new clothing, new shoes, and a party. His father sees him, runs out to meet him, and wants only to show him how deeply valued and beloved he is. Grace never does just enough. By definition, grace overflows, expands explodes, exceeds, gratuitously manifests in unexpected ways. Grace is exhibited by embarrassing public displays of affection, weeping in joy, running in welcome, new robes, new rings, new shoes, a huge party where all are invited, so that no one could possibly question their value or belovedness. People get excited when their inherent value and dignity, their individuality and their God-given worth, is honored with welcome, celebration, and new shoes, too. I think about all of the many ways that people have walked into this building. Some of you remember running in as children, or the times when you walked in heavy-hearted, grieving at the loss of a friend or a loved one. We've walked into this building with hope and joy and expectation, We've walked into this building in grief and mourning, in despair and depression. We've walked into this building maybe not sure of the kind of welcome we would receive, uncertain as to how this congregation would welcome people, welcome the stranger. And yet, as we know, this congregation does indeed welcome people. They welcome people and love and offer caring and prayer, offer fellowship, restoration and recovery as we proclaim and teach and serve and worship God. All of these things, we welcome the stranger, we welcome the friend, we welcome the person who doesn't look like us or love like us, or pray like us, or think like us, we welcome everyone into this God's sacred space 
into God's ministry and love through this congregation and this building. I invite you to please pray with me. Lord, we do give you thanks and praise for the sacred space that you have entrusted to this congregation and to the community. We pray, Lord, that in all ways and in every time that a person enters this building, they will feel welcomed, they will feel loved, and they will feel blessed. And that they will feel and know the power and presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, through God the Father and the Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. God bless you and have a good week.